Good morning, guys. I am all set up to do some painting tonight with an oversized painting class that I'm doing. So see the big painting behind? So I'm in a different studio. It looks a little bit different. I've got the cameras all set up and an easel ready to go. But I didn't, I needed to go ahead and do our filming now so that you could have it tomorrow. Okay. So I am, um, it's early. I want you to um, think in your quiet time. Relax and paint is all about inspiring you to relax. Think about something you really like to paint. Try practicing some of my strokes with me. And then maybe even later in the day or tomorrow morning or some other time when you have time to do it, to sit and do a little me time. And you have talent. I don't know if you know that talent's in there, but you have talent. And I want to inspire you to use that talent. And you need to grow and practice. And as you do that, when you're growing your technique and you do your practice strokes, you will be able to paint something that you will not think you could have ever painted. So I have to tell you, I wanted to do painting really bad. And with seven children, I had no time for classes. Didn't even know who I had asked to teach me to paint. But I started seeing pictures of stroke work that people have painted. And I thought, oh, they took this one brush and they put all that paint on it at one time. And guess what? I put all this color in it. And as I stroked, it looked like something. And I was like excited. So I worked on it and worked on it and I got, you know, I did some base coating and adding strokes to it. But as I came up with um, the opportunity to paint on a bunch of metal tinware for a company that saw my work, I thought, um, I've got to do all that in one stroke. And that's how I created this. Because if you're on metal, did you know you can't really base coat it and let it dry and then go work and float on top of it because it lifts up the paint. So I had to do one stroke. So blend it on my brush, one stroke, and I could get blending, shading, and highlighting at one time. So that's how I had the paint. And then I had to get quick so that my friends and I could all paint all these thousands of pieces of metalware French buckets and watering cans and um, supply them to this company. So that's kind of how I created it. And so we all have um, creations, creative thoughts in our minds. And I don't know about you, but have you ever looked at a magazine and th said, I've done cooler things than that, or now Pinterest or some of these other places and say, I could do that. So God blesses us all with talents. All right. My blessing is that I found out what I was good at and I practiced and practiced and shared. You know, the blessing is by sharing, it comes back tenfold. Sometimes I thought, I'm gonna tell them my secret. <laughs> and, but you know what, it always blessed me back. So I'm gonna do my very favorite, the thing that made me more famous out here in the painting world, and that's my rose. And I've done it many times, but I want to do a slower version this morning and hope that it inspires you. And maybe you'll catch something if you've been trying my rose that you, you might think, I never saw them do that. Okay. So just remember, the more I teach, the better I get teaching. So maybe, maybe I'll say the right thing that helps you today. Okay. So let's get started. I want to go to my overhead camera. There we go. And I want you to take deep breaths. I think peace while you're watching this. Okay. So I'm going to come over to another one of my scrapbooking papers. Okay. So I don't have these anymore, but these are some from before years ago. All right. So I have my paper towels ready. I'm going to move over. I have, these are brushes that are on HSN. It's a special set. And I'm going to have my brush basin. This is where I'm going to clean out my br brush when I need to. 
I want you to see that this is a double loader and it has a lid and a lid over this, but I just want to use this so you can see how to use it. It comes in green or lavender and there's all kinds of little compartments that help you. I also, if I'm holding this like this, this is the, the palette that I put foam plates in usually, but this is a double loader I'm going to work with. Floaty medium. That's the fluff that's inside paint with no pigment. There's magenta. Now I'm using multi-surface paint. So it goes indoor, outdoor, and it paints on a lot of stuff. So I only need one paint to make most of everything happen unless I'm doing fabric. I like fabric paint. Okay, guys. So magenta and white. And you notice I put them next to each other because I'm going to work with those together. This is like going to show you how I help you control your loading because most people can do my strokes if they feel comfortable with the loading process, okay? All right, so then I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. So magenta, wicker wine, this is bumblebee yellow, it's a new yellow, but it can be a yellow light or some other yellows. Then citrus green and sap green. All right, now I let this run over a little bit, so I gotta be careful in there. And I'm gonna use mostly, these are my new signature brushes, but um, these are the ones that are exclusive on HSM, but I just had them right here, so I thought I'd use them. You dampen your brush first, and you lay it on a paper towel. All right, the excess water goes out. Then you're going to come right here, and I'm going to go right between. I'm going to divide this and pick up paint and come here and work it in quick and fast. Now, is that because I want you to be fast? No, the reason we do this, I want you to understand, is I want to put paint inside those bristles so that when you're stroking, these bristles don't split. Because when people say, my bristles split open and they don't do smooth. So I want you to see, I'm going to pick up a couple of times. And I might want two-thirds pink and one-third white if I feel like I need just a little bit of white. All right. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. See, so just dip and work that in. Now, I've got a lot of paint on here right now, and it doesn't look like it needs medium. But if it does, I dip straight in medium, and I work it in, and then I'm ready to go. All right, so let's get started here. That's loading. Now, I want you to see I split the brush here, but I don't split the brush there, okay? Now, I'm going to come down a little bit more. Oops. Okay. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you that I am going one, two, three, and I'm going to wiggle and do um, my first petal. Now, I have way too much on here, so I'm going to go back. Okay. Now, this is wet on wet, but what I want to want you to see is I want to have some soft waves here. So what I do is I use my flowers to lay out my design. And so I, I put the leaves last after I lay out the flowers. But I want you to see I use the size of the palm of my hand to lay out and I do about five petals. So look, I'm gonna go one, two, three, and I'm gonna see my brush handles up and I'm going to slowly make a few little waves to make that stroke. And I'm overlapping them. Let's see, so I went and got paint twice. And because I want the slick scrapbooking paper, it goes smooth on here. If you're on dry paper, you're going to need more um, floating medium or more paint. So I want you to see that I can go over those again to make them the colors I want. But the key is, I'm just doing this over because I want you to see that you don't wipe it off, you just go over it again. So see how that's all blended and smooth? So I did five petals, I overlapped them, and my eyes should be looking at the scallop out here. All right, so I'm gonna go back here. I can come right here, like I said, and do two-thirds 
ink and one third white. Okay, so let's look here. I can also put a second layer right here. Okay. You see how I'm one, two, three, I'm half sprung. And I do another stroke here. So see how it's just overlapping. Now I keep going over there, sometimes just right here without getting more paint. All right, so then I wanna do two lines and I'm gonna go from line to line. Let's go even a little closer. Okay. So look, I'm gonna go from the same line to line and I'm gonna come in and make it the center of the rose, okay? All right, so I can continue here. See, I'm pulling this brush as I go. So I'm gonna take and do it half sprung, not up on the chisel and not all the way down, but halfway, see my handles up and my eyes are looking at the white and I'm going like this in my hand. And standing up, okay? So I'm also still going in that same cubby again. I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna lean the white out and come across. So watch this, I come right here, lean the white and see that white right there? I'm gonna come across as I do that. So what I'm doing, I'm rolling that white out there and letting the petal look like it leans out. All right, so let's do it in here again. And then I can slice across. So look, just lean the white, lean the white, and then come across in there. All right, and if you don't like anything, see that little spot, I can go right back over. All right, and then I could also just come in here and stay up on the edge of the bristles. And I can come in here and just add a few more little white slices to give you more layers. See that? Look, lean the white and come across. So it makes it pretty full. You can decide to do that as you go. You can add a few more. Like sometimes I'm saying, hey, I like one in there, but it's good just like that. I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm gonna go in and let's get some green the same way. I'm gonna sit, keep it really close so you can see. So see how I, how I overloaded that on the side there. So let's work it in really quick, same brush. Okay, I'm seeing all the floating medium because I have plenty of paint. Just when you feel like it's getting dry. All right, so I'm I need it two thirds full. And I'm gonna come right against this rose. And since I'm on this uh, medium green, I wanna hold a dark green to the outside edge. So see, there's that rose petal again. But now I'm gonna stand up. And I can also come in here and get a little bit of white and come over here. So I took the green from here and just slid over here. And you can have that dark green in the middle and it makes the leaf look like it's lifting up a little bit. Like this side's coming up. Remember, if you're not happy, look at this. You're gonna go in and out, in and out, and then pull a stem in there, all right? So let's add a few more leaves. Let's put a light on the outside. I'm gonna get a little bit more white in there. So it really pops, see that? So we slide to a point and it's okay to turn your project, okay? There we go. Let's see, I lost paint. So I went right back here again with the white. There we go. 
Now, what I like you to see is this. This looks a little bit more fancy than this one. So it's because I'm moving in and out a little bit. All right. So I can take this big brush and just pull a stem into that one leaf. But I usually like to go to a smaller brush for that. All right. Also, I can come a little bit away from the rose. All right. Let's come right here. I can come in and back out. And then I can get up on the chisel and just pull a little stem in. All right. So see, it just gives you a little bit nice to change the colors of the leaves and the look of the leaves. And an angle brush makes really easy leaves. You just have to concentrate on what color, what side you're going to put the dark on. So I put it on the toe and let's see what that looks like. The toe is the point, the heel is the shorter part of this angle brush, okay? You get all five of these brushes on hsn.com, the shopping channel. And these are my signature five brush set. All right, so, and they've got my flowers on the, this rose right here on the handle, okay? So, no, a little thing I wanna show you is that if you're having a hard time with using the chisel, this has this cut away. So all you're doing is touching the toe and then you touch the toe on there and you can make little leaves and then pull stems into them. So it makes it really easy to do that. All right, isn't that kind of fun? I just wanted to show you really quick, easy way, depending on what size brush you use. Here's a 12, and I work that 12 in. Okay, I can even put some pink and white in here and make it a little bit, I'll give you another color in here. All right, so let me show you what you do. You, let's pull down. You touch on an angle and you're gonna push down and just stand up. Push down and just stand up. All right, and it has a different color. A little bit of that pink. All right. So I just wanted to throw a real simple, simple rose and leaf how-to this morning. Just to inspire you to go practice your roses and practice your leaves. All right. So I will see you next week. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know if you're enjoying this or you would like more full-length lessons. I love to hear from you. And you can... Write me here, you can write me on Messenger, or you can also go to our Facebook, Donna Dewberry, um, Donna Dewberry's official One Stroke Group, and watch us on Facebook where everybody shares, and share your practice sheets, I'd love to see them. Also, go to onestroke.com for more videos and lessons, and to pick up all your painting supplies from me. Thank you guys. See you next week.